this is Charles Darwin, and um, greetings. And once again, we're at the bed of the Paluxy River near Glen Rose, Texas, and we're talking with Glenn Kuban, an expert on the dinosaur footprints and dinosaur trackways of the Paluxy River. You may have heard of the Paluxy River before because there have been certain films that have been made and claims by creationists saying that there were dinosaurs and humans walking alongside each other. Now this is sort of problematic because that would be during the layers that we call the Cretaceous that would have been right in the middle of the flood and so how could people have escaped the flood while hundreds of feet of sediments were being deposited below them. Then they came out, ran around, and then uh, they were uh, lots more sediments deposited over them. What exactly does a creationist mean by the word Cretaceous? But this is the Cretaceous layer, and we're going to learn a little bit about some of the footprints that have been made famous as supposedly the prints of dinosaurs and humans. This is uh, the famous Taylor Trail, perhaps the most renowned trail of alleged human tracks. Um, there are other types of tracks that weren't even in the riverbed, apparently. Some carved on loose blocks of rock, and they're not promoted anymore um, by most creationists. There were also some just erosional features that aren't tracks of any kind that, uh, again, aren't, aren't promoted. Uh, but then there are many of these elongated tracks that um, were mistaken by many locals and creationists, especially years ago, for human tracks or giant man tracks, as they sometimes call them. Because they're very large, they're bigger than In would be made cases, by. Right, they're considerably longer than the typical human foot. I have a smaller than average size foot, but if I put my foot next to, but you can see the difference. And uh, this was a very famous set of tracks here because you had an alleged human track overlapping a deep and obvious three toed dinosaur track. And uh, what these turned out to be are dinosaurs walking in an unusual fashion, putting weight on the back part of their foot. So it looked more like they were walking on a human heel. Right. They're actually walking perhaps somewhat like a human, but this was the section of the track that was focused on by the creations and locals uh, when they mistook them for human tracks. In some cases they would see irregularities that they imagined to be toes, but none of them had clear toe marks as John Morris and others who once promoted them as human tracks have since acknowledged. And what has happened, and one reason that they didn't notice the dinosaurian features is that they were infilled with the secondary sediment. And some of the infilling has come out, or has raised up, or has oxidized to become darker. And so, especially when you clean the tracks well, it's pretty obvious that there is a three-toed pattern at the front, and that this back part is the metatarsis of the foot. Sometimes you also see indications of the first digit, or the helix here. And, um, Everyone's a little different, but you all you see this long metatarsis on this on every track in this trail here, the Taylor Trail, and some indications of the toes. John Morris recently said that, uh, as he did in 1985 when he did backpedal from some of the claims, that he didn't quite understand this coloration phenomenon, and even implied that maybe somebody stained the tracks to make them look more dinosaurian. Somebody? But that right uh, could not have been the case because. For a lot of reasons. One, it's not just a surface color phenomenon. There's at least some relief where, where you see the infilling. It's a, definitely a different texture. You can see it's a smoother, finer grain, clay-like material that infilled the tracks. In many cases, there are fissures or small cracks that coincide with the infilling material. And finally, we took core samples with the permission of Texas Parks and Wildlife at the boundary of the infilling and the limestone. And you can see that that infilling boundary continues down under the surface with the same type of distinct uh, contrast. So for many different reasons, it's very plain that these are infilled dinosaur tracks, not just some surface phenomenon. And um, I, I wish that John would, would, would acknowledge that publicly as he did to me on, on, on site in 1985. And uh, so the controversy could be put to rest more completely. So if you see this picture of a human footprint on the left and the dinosaur footprint on the right, you can see actually it's just two dinosaur footprints. It's right. pretty clear right, right by now. By two different types of dinosaur footprints. This again is made by a dinosaur putting weight on the heel or metatarsis. So I call them metatarsal tracks. Uh, for a long time we weren't sure if it might just be perhaps a, a younger or smaller Acrocanthosaurus, which is the dinosaur that made most of the three toe tracks in and around Glen Rose. But now we're thinking because of the proportion of the metatarsis to the proportion of the digits that 
some of these at least might be made by another type of dinosaur called an ornithomimid, mm -hmm. or informally an ostrich type dinosaur. We're not sure, but that's what we're, th we're thinking now. But in any case, some dinosaurs did it at times impress their heels and uh, make these elongated impressions. And, it's, and sometimes they're infilled, or in other cases, the mud will come back over the toes, which will obscure the, the, the digits. In this case, they're, they're heavily infilled. And part of the problem, too, is that some of the early researchers, they did not clean the tracks well. You know, they'd focus on the major depression. But in some cases, when the infilling has not come out, and it's, it's, uh, there is some relief here, but it's mostly uh, the texture and color difference, you have to clean the surface well in order to see the digits. Uh, but if we walk through the trail here, you can see everyone's a little different. This one, you can see the outline of the infilling in the three toes here. This is minus 3B, which I first documented uh, quite a few years ago, and most of the creationists missed. Um, ironically, uh, there was an accusation made that I may have uh, destroyed this track. Well, it's not destroyed. There's no human track to destroy. It's a dinosaur track. These are places where the infilling material, uh, pieces of the infilling material have, have sloughed out. There's some of it still over, overlying part of the track. But again, if you look close, you can see the outline of the infilling. It's a smoother texture, the shape of three digits here and then the metatarsis, or heel of the foot. Here's the next one. In this case, the uh, metatarsis is, is a little bit deeper. It's more of the infilling has sloughed out, but you can see indications of three-toe pattern or splaying at the front. This one's a little more obvious. Here you see three indications of the three-toe pattern, especially the middle toe. You can see where the infilling is still stuck in the toe pretty well. This is the next track in the sequence. Here are some coarse um, samples that were taken by ICR. They took the larger samples. Um, the smaller ones, Ron Hastings and I took. And we took ours right at the boundary of the infilling and the outside material. If we wet this, you could see it a little, little more plainly. And again, you could see that infilling boundary continuing down under the surface. So it couldn't have just been painted on? Of course not. Like I said, there's textures, there's fissures, there's some, at least some relief in the shape of the toes, so for many uh, types of evidence it's just plain that these are infill tracks. Uh, this is a trail crossing the Taylor Trail, and it goes all the way across the river, even through the deep scours, which means that the original tracks were quite deep before they were infilled. Uh, this is a continuation of the Taylor Trail. Again, you see indications of the infill digits. And it's and called the Taylor Trail because? It was named after Stan Taylor, who filmed Footprints in Stone. It was very popular movie that was shown all around the country promoting the idea that these are human tracks. But when Paul Taylor, Stan's son, came down in 1985 at my invitation to relook at these tracks, he did acknowledge that, yes, they're infill dinosaur tracks, and he stopped uh, circulating the movie at that time. But here you see a good uh, indication of the infilling material. There's cracks around it, and again, a smoother texture, at least some relief. This is... Uh, Plus three, every track, uh, we, we number number the tracks. And uh, here you see this digit again. This one's more flush, but again, at least some indications of, of the three toe pattern. This is an interesting track because the digits are well infilled. There's not a lot of relief here, just a little bit. But again, there's some fine fissures and definitely a texture difference in the shape of a dinosaur foot. And during the film, they only showed a few tracks fairly close, and then others like this, they panned by fairly quickly. And Stan Taylor, who was narrating, made the comment when he was panning by this track, and some were just elongated slides, and he was looking at this feature here. But if you stop the frame, you can see the exact same outline that's, that you can still see to this day on this track. So it's actually on the creationist film. That was way back in 1970, right. So somebody did tamper with these tracks. There wasn't anybody recently, but nobody uh, colored the tracks. You can see by all the reasons I've been explaining that this is a material that filled in the original tracks. And the toes, in this case, you can see very easily why somebody could have missed this phenomenon that if you didn't clean the surface very well, you would be looking mainly at the back part. And it's not enough just to brush it, any little superficial Sediment or algae will obscure these infilled features in many cases if they're not impressed. Although, again, there are cases like this where you can see the toes are at least somewhat indented or even raised, depending on whether the infilling is oxidized or not, whether it's softer or harder than the limestone. This is an interesting track. It's plus six, which used to be thought to be the last one in the series. Uh, it was, this was identified as the, as the track that was 
after uh, plus five there, and uh, it was thought that this was a foot where the mud had come back with come between the toes, and these were the other toes. If you use your imagination, you can right. see but a you big can see toe. What it, what it really is is a mud crack pattern that continues all, and it's pretty gnarly down here. And if you look close to what you and you look at the stride and so forth, you can see this is actually the next track in the sequence of the Taylor Trail. This is really part of the heel of an infill dinosaur track going that way. If you can see, there's the outline of the three toes of that track, and this is the Taylor track here. Now this infilling is actually overlying the whole front of the track, is white, so you don't see the three toe pattern as plain as you do on the other tracks. But again, this is not even part of the Taylor Trail, and what you can imagine, sometimes they would leave the water in the back part, kind of encouraging the idea that this is a big toe. But again, it's a mud crack pattern, and it's part of a, the heel of a dinosaur track going that way. Yeah, because you can see the three toes there yes. going. Right, the infield toes. Okay. Right. Yes, well, that's very interesting. And those of you who have seen uh, Footprints in Stone or other uh, creationist movies that talk about humans and dinosaurs living at the same time, uh, now you've seen for yourself what is actually in the bed of the Paluxy River Hi. near Glen Rose, Texas. And uh, this is Charles Darwin. Tally ho and amen. <laughs>